Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk to you about your future of work. And I have news for you. Some good news and some less good news. Which one shall I start with? <laughs> less good news. I knew that you would answer that. Thank you. So the less good news, we don't know about your future of work. You might be working in jobs that are not existing today. You might be changing more than many jobs during your whole work career. You know that the automation already started, don't you? But I'm going to tell you that according to OECD estimates, in the next 10 years, more than 1 billion jobs will be transformed and changed due to automation and technology. So in short, what I say to you is that you will be working in jobs and you will be looking for jobs and competing not only against your human fellows, but you will be against, uh, competing against com uh, technology. Robots with superior AI. Did I scare you a bit? No. Good. <laughs> so, who, who has watched the movie Matrix? Raise hands. Everybody, more or less. Okay, who has watched the original in 1999? I guess only the speakers. <laughs> Remember, what was Morpheus saying? Morpheus was talking about an artificial intelligence in the most destructive way, which enslaved humanity. Thank God, it's more than 21 years and I would say that we are not at that point yet. That's good to know. So behind me, there is Hans Moravec's illustration for an imaginary landscape. So where are we today? Where are we today is me. I am not a technology scientist. I'm a social scientist. This is good news again. <laughs> and for me, what I do is I use my root memorization when I rent cars in Europe, I used to pay extra for navigation option. I don't pay it anymore because technology gets cheaper. I have a robot, that's true, but only cleans the house and that's not very intelligent, I must say. I have problems with it. And I Google Translate. So this illustration is about the rising tide of artificial intelligence. Please look at it carefully. I show it for you. So what do I say to you? Avoid the waterfront. Avoid the jobs that is about routine, repetition. And it's about how the artificial intelligence is coming up to the mountains. What do you see at the top of the mountains? What does it say? Art, cinematography, book writing, science. What do they have in common? Thank you. It's humanness. It's human consciousness. And it's creativity. It is this instinctive unpredictability. No computer, no artificial intelligence can compete with it. So it is this building, if you are in, even... In, how this the Gaudi architect built, designed this house? Whenever I'm in front of this house in Barcelona, I feel like this is living. This house lives. And, you know, Karayan, I have never seen him alive. But he conducts as an orchestra chef with his eyes closed. How could you conduct an orchestra with your eyes closed? Intuition. It's, it's his creativity. And Van Gogh, what kind of a spring roll he had in South France to have these almond blossoms? You know, today, it brings, what does it bring to you when you look at it? Hope, happiness, awakening. That's why centuries later, you see it as wallpaper. I have it as tray in my house. So, and I promise you some more good news. I continue to say that. The more good news is there will be more jobs. There will be more need for services. And these jobs will need more humanness. Please look at behind me. It's the World Economic Forum Skills Outlook. 2022. Look at some of these skills. I'm not here to give you all of it, but look at them. It's 
Of course, there will be STEM, meaning science, technology, engineering, math, to be able to have the system analysis, technology design, but the rest, look at it, thinking, learning, creativity. You know, in 2015, Skills Outlook, creativity was number 10. And how about leadership and social science influence? You didn't have it. How about emotional intelligence? You didn't have it even five years ago in the skills outlook. So, we have hard skills, and our hard skills are job specific. They are technique. And we have soft skills. What are really these soft skills, which I tell you, you will be needing mostly in your future? Soft skills are human skills, people skills. It's not related with your technical information, but you need them. It's all your interpersonal skills. It's about your self-awareness, your ability to listen, communication. I make listening exercises in my uh, listening class, and they say to me, I say, just 10 minutes, do not interrupt the other one. And, and they say, okay, it seems very easy. You know what? They come to me and say, oh my God, 10 minutes without interruption? Are you kidding me? It's impossible. Somebody just told me for the first time, my close friend listened to me for 10 minutes without interrupting me. There was tears in her eyes. So don't tell me you know the soft skills. Networking, decision taking, and interacting with each other, team building, empathizing with somebody, initiating something. Entrepreneurship, learning and teaching, these are the soft skills, what I would say to you. Soft skills are hard skills. But I continue with my good news. You can learn them. And I started to learn them very later stage in my life. Coming from the hardcore business, I learned them only a couple of years ago in INSEAD, in my executive master for change management. And if I learn them now, you have much longer time, and you, you the digital uh, natives, have much better understanding of the technology than me, the digital immigrant, right? right? But still, I'm here to give you three recommendations coming from my personal experience, how you can sharpen your soft skills for your future of work. I want to start with the word connect. And firstly, I want you to connect to yourself. Are you connected to yourself? We are strangers to ourselves because the way we are educated, we look at external world. But you need your, uh, you, to, to your self-awareness. Uh, in the ancient temples, they write, know yourself. So what do you need to do for that, to know yourself? You need to be a detective to yourself. You need to be aware of your little stupidities, your darkness, who you are. You know this voice talking to you? Do you have it? I have it. It was saying to me this morning, again? Are you again giving a keynote speech? <laughs> Leave it. But once you are aware of it, and once you find, so... Uh, once you find yourself talking to it, that's a good point. So here are my personal tips. Please, and but start from tonight. Start from today. Create some space for, for yourself without any digitals. Please, some space where you can do something you like as a human. I do walk, meditate, read a good classical book. Dostoevsky will you, give you some characters that will tell you all about self and the darkness of the self. So once you are connected to yourself, now we can talk about what? Of course we can talk about connecting to others. But what do I mean by connecting to others? I definitely don't mean your national uh, uh, family or your close friends. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about connecting to others. I'm telling you, get out of your comfort zone. Who am I to tell you that? I am someone without comfort zone with the last 25 years. I work in men's world. <laughs> Seems like a cliche, isn't it? But it isn't. I work in the heavy commercial vehicles industry and transportation in Europe. And I'm very proud of my fellow men, of course. I travel 
around the nations, around the cultures, non-stop. I represent my company, I represent associations, and I represent the well-being of the transportation industry to create a better transportation, more effective globally. What does it bring to me? I am a world citizen. I can be anywhere. I can be with you today, and tomorrow I will be flying. It's okay. I can be in different cultures, and I enjoy myself. So what are my tips for you to be getting connected? I strongly urge you, again, to start from today. Are you a member of an association in your university? Can you raise hands if to do so? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do be involved in an association. What are you caring for? Find a purpose. You don't need to have a big purpose. I'm talking about your everyday life. What do you care for? Animals? Women rights, human rights, politics, art? Find something. Be part of an association. Get involved with people. Do you think it's easy for me, even today as a chief networking officer, entering into a room full of people I don't know, languages I don't know, but I know one thing. Every time I leave this room, I will have a story of a beautiful person. I will find a project partner. I know I will have some value with me. So I strongly urge you, go to your neighborhood, go to your community, but go to your community, volunteer for some kind of a work. Spend some time for it. And now, I have my third one. I told you that your work will be changing throughout your career in the future. So why to put all your skills all in one basket? Go learn new skills. And the future will be about ability to learn. Unlearn, learn, and learn. What does it mean? You will say to me, come on, we are university students. We are here to learn. No, I'm not talking about that. That's forgiven. That's natural. What is it? What do you do in your free times? How do you develop yourselves? How do you develop the new skills? They say until 2022, even the people who are working, we will need 101 days to upskill ourselves. So what do you do for it? Again, my tips. My tip is I'm teaching. It gives me meaning, but also I learn. When you teach, you learn. You must learn. Okay, what else you can do? I use every airport, every uh, driving is for me learning. Put your earphones. Listen to a talk, talk. Look at your apps. How many languages are you learning? I practice my languages. There's so many beautiful apps, which I will not name to you. But everywhere for me, my coffer, airport, everywhere is an opportunity. Learn to learn. You need a flexible mind, flexible mental mind, to be able to cope for the future. So, having summing up, I said to you, in order to develop your future of work, please connect to yourself. Please connect to others. And please connect to continuous learning. Because, as Heraclitus said already 2,500 years ago, only constant is change. Be prepared for change. And if you do all these, and I want you to connect your humanness because the future is our humanity. Remember I showed you the artificial intelligence coming up the mountains and I said to you, I promised you, if you are able to interact with your humanness, you will be able to have your future. And that's the iceberg analogy for it. We humans are the most adaptable species. And I am uh, thinking that we will have a beautiful future. We as humans, adaptable and using the technology and enhancing our creativity. And as my last words, I want to make a call to every education. Please put soft skills. Please bring soft skills to every level of schools. We need to sharpen our soft skills for a very bright future. Thank you so much, everybody.